Okay, so my name is Adrian. I've worked for ADI as a software developer for the past almost four years. And uh, I'm going to show you how you can build a radio with N2K and spare parts. So before we begin, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the analog, analog Devices Active Learning Program. So it is dedicated to inspiring uh, students to better understand the world of uh, electronics and analog signals. And it tries to bring uh, technology into, into, the, into the classroom. So the uh, active learning program consists of uh, boards. So we have these boards that are called active learning modules. There's the M1K, uh, Adam 1000, Adam 2000, which we call the M2K, and uh, the Pluto, which is the, an SDR. So we also provide uh, free courseware, uh, lab materials, and uh, you know, free books uh, for, for teachers to use in their, in their courses. So, um, the, the hardware is the M2K, which is an affordable USB-powered uh, multifunction instrument. So this is not the Pluto, but uh, it's based on the same infrastructure as the Pluto. So it, is, uh, it has a Zinc Z7010 uh, SoC that is running Linux, but it has a different analog front end and um, uh, has a different analog front end, and um, it has the AD19963 chip. But the connectivity options are the same as the, as the Pluto, so you, you can connect to it using USB, you can have a Wi-Fi dongle or a LAN dongle, or you can put in even a memory stick. Uh, if you want to use the OTG capabilities of the Pluto, you would also need to use the secondary power connector. So it's all open source, open source hardware, open source software. Uh, you can check out the, the source code, the schematics at the links uh, there. So, uh, like I said, it's based on the same infrastructure as the Pluto, so the bottom part uh, is pretty much the same. You have uh, USB 2.0, you have LibIO, there's uh, a Linux running on it, but the analog front end is a little different. So, um, what are the specs of the M2K? So, it has a two-channel, two 100 megasamples per second ADC with an input range of plus minus 20 volts. It has uh, 16 digital input-output channels at uh, 100 megasamples per second. It has a trigger mechanism which supports both uh, internal and external triggering. It uh, has a two-channel ch two DAC which, which is synchronized at 150 megasamples per second. And it also has a, a plus minus five volt power supply. So uh, how you can interact with it? Well, there's Scopy, uh, which is our GUI software. There's the libm2k, which is a C++ library. You can use a GRIO uh, out of three module. And uh, there's also the m2k CLI, which are a set of command line tools. So in order to better understand what's going on, um, we have to look at the analog signal chain. So like I said, the m2k is an embedded, uh, embedded Linux host. It uh, gathers data from the hardware, puts it into the kernel, and eventually uses the IO subsystem to manage all of the uh, inputs and outputs. There's an application uh, which is called IOD uh, that's running, that's a daemon that's running on the, on the M2K, which uh, helps uh, send the data over the USB or Wi-Fi uh, link back to the host computer. So on the other side of things, once the data reaches uh, the host computer, you can use LibIO to, to get the data. And from this point, you can do pretty much anything that you want with the data. So in our, in our case, we use the LibM2K, then GRIO, and eventually GNU Radio to do uh, some of the signal processing. So uh, the software, it's called the uh, Scopy. It is a touch-friendly, modern-looking uh, software. It uh, leverages GNU Radio to implement a bunch of vir virtual instruments, such as the oscilloscope, the signal generator, voltmeter, power supply, spectrum analyzer, network analyzer, and uh, a bunch of uh, logical instruments as well. So uh, this software is also open source, uh, and it's still under active development. Um, also, I'll qu quickly mention the M2K CLI, which, is, which are a set of command line tools for the M2K. They, they can be used for calibration, configuration of the, device, of the device. So there is no need to write uh, extra software if you want to do just something basic with the device. You can 
power up a, a bash, a bash console, and uh, just you know create a, create a script to automate your measurement and configuration. Uh, the library uh, it's called libm2k. It is a C++ uh, library to interface with the with the m2k. So uh, in IIO there are lots of you know switches and knobs that need to be like in the perfect order for things to work. Uh, but uh, li what libm2k does is that it abstracts all the, all the device device initialization, calibration, and operation in uh, easy to use methods. So it is built on top of uh, libio and it has a minimal set of dependencies. But um, and we also provide build instructions for uh, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Uh, there's also a Windows installer because building things on Windows can be hard. Uh, so you just uh, run a setup and uh, you're good to go uh, on uh, Windows. We also created uh, Python bindings, C sharp bindings, and MATLAB bindings for the libm2k. And it's all open source uh, with LGPL uh, license. So earlier today, you caught Travis's, uh, maybe you caught Travis's lightning talk about uh, our different uh, transceivers. So, uh, and there, there was a slide about uh, different kinds of uh, radio architecture. Uh, there's the superhead in the top left. Uh, there's the uh, direct RF, which is the, on the top right. And then there's the zero IF uh, on the bottom. So what we're trying to do here is kind of create this kind of uh, zero IF transceiver where we get the data from the antenna. We amplify it. Uh, down convert it with the mixer and then use the M2K to do the digital signal processing. So how do you build a radio, a radio with the M2K? So uh, in the top left, there's the, uh, the experiment, let's say. Uh, it has like, uh, it get, gets data from the antenna. It, it's exactly like in the previous slide. You, it gets amplified, uh, down converted by the mixer and uh, then uh, sent, sent back to the M2K. So all of the parts used are commercial off the shelf. We got the parts from uh, eBay and uh, for, from eBay and Amazon, and it was uh, so, super cheap to build. So uh, here on the, on the right, there's uh, the, um, the diagram of the, the M2K, uh, of the diagram of the, of the radio, and uh, we used the AD8331 AD mixer to, to down convert, and we used the ADF4351 PLL to provide the LO frequency. Uh, the problem is though that the ADF4351 is a digital, uh, it has a digital configuration interface. So uh, you would s need some kind of uh, other hardware to be able to interface with it. So maybe you would need something like an Arduino with a knob or maybe a Raspberry Pi or I don't know, maybe you could uh, rewrite the M2K firmware to be able to handle that. But that seems like uh, a lot of extra work. So we're going to show you how we use the libm2k to configure the PLL. Uh, also, if you really want to achieve uh, performance, uh, there are all of those filters which are not in place in our, in our prototype. But uh, if you want to achieve good performance, you would have to, to design those filters as well. So uh, I just want to show you here like, um, what the Lib M2K is, it is used to make interacting with the M2K easier. So uh, I'm going to show you the block di the, some of the features of the Lib M2K and how you can use them in uh, different radio systems. So uh, in order to access uh, the, the M2K, you would have to create a context. So you would create a context with using the M2K open uh, function. And then from this context, you would get handles to all of the different digital, uh, all of the different instruments that the M2K provides. Um, M2K contexts, like I said, are basically uh, device handles. So M2K contexts handle uh, like uh, device calibration, device initialization, identification, and then uh, provides uh, handles for, for, the rest, for the rest of the instruments. Uh, multiple devices can be instanti instantiated with the uh, libm2k, and uh, uh, so you can do synchronous measurements across multiple devices. So uh, on the right, it's a ex simple Python example of how 
like a hello world for, for the lib-m2k. You just open the m2k, calibrate the ADC, uh, you get the handle for the analog input, and then uh, you just get the voltage. It's uh, super, super easy to use. So uh, the analog in class is the interface to the two-channel 12-bit 100 mega samples per second analog input. Uh, this analog input works at baseband. So, uh, like I said, this is not the, uh, this is not an RF uh, transceiver. This is more like an instrumentation thing. So, uh, this works at, at uh, baseband. It has an input voltage in low gain of uh, plus minus 25 volts and uh, plus minus 2.5 volts in high gain. And uh, with the libm2k, you don't have to worry about uh, converting the from raw values to volts because. Uh, all of these methods are, pro are provided for you. Also, uh, there's uh, triggering, which I'll show in the next slide. But um, uh, you know, you, ca you can use this uh, analog input in your uh, radio project to yet get analog data from, from your system and uh, basically do <laughs> any anything that you want with it. So uh, the harder sorry the harder trigger class. Um, is uh, uh, an interface to the to end to case versatile trigger mechanism. So uh, what it is used for is to condition, sig condition signal acquisition, either by edge or by uh, signal amplitude. Um, there are two types of triggers. There's internal triggers and external triggers. So internal triggers uh, rely on the state of the signal for both the analog and the digital interface. Uh, while external triggers rely on external trigger pins, such as the trigger input pin, the uh, trigger in pin, uh, when you get a signal on that uh, pin, it uh, triggers uh, a measurement. There's also a trigger out pin on the M2K, and uh, what this does is basically whenever uh, the M2K detects a trigger condition, it forwards a pulse on the trigger out pin. So what this is used for is to daisy chain mu multiple M2Ks uh, in order to do synchronized measurements uh, across multiple multiple devices. So for this project, the analog trigger was not that useful because in order to, to get uh, radio, you would have to get all of the signals, all, all of the data that's coming through. You would not need any uh, uh, signal conditioning, but uh, it will. it is useful what the digital trigger is useful. So I'll show you immediately how. Uh, the analog output is uh, the interface to the M2K's 150 mega samples per second two channel synchronized DAC. Uh, so, similarly to the analog input, uh, it provides m easy to use methods to push the data to the DAC, uh, convert data from raw to volts, and uh, different other configuration options. So, uh, it can be used to provide LO signal uh, for up to 20 megahertz, and or also if you want to build like a radio transmitter, uh, it can provide the intermediate frequency. Uh, the power supply and the DMM, so DMM stands for digital multimeter. Uh, these uh, classes uh, are the interface to M2K's power supply, which is a plus minus 5 volt, 50 milliamp power supply. We couldn't use uh, this uh, power supply for this project because our power requirements are way bigger, 12 volts, 150 millia uh, milliamps. But I thought it was uh, worth, worth mentioning. So the picture on the right is actually a screenshot from uh, Scopy. And uh, it can kind of shows that uh, you have a 5 volts on the positive output and minus 3 on the negative output. The DMM. Uh, is an interface to the uh, M2K's internal voltages and temperatures and can be used for the different kinds of device monitoring. Um, the, the digital interface of the M2K is, uh, provides 16 digital input and, uh, inputs and outputs which are capable of buffered operation uh, and also triggered operation. So uh, as outputs, they can be configured either as push-pull and open drain, and so they are ideal to bit bang a variety of protocols. And from the input, you can decode again a variety of protocols. So in this project, the digital interface was used to configure the ADF 4351 PLL in order to generate um, LO frequencies. <clears throat> so. Uh, 
like I said, the ADF4351 has a, a SPI interface. Uh, like that's like I'm sure a lot of you have heard about SPI, Serial Peripheral, Peripheral Interface. It is a protocol that's used to configure a, a variety of devices. Uh, so what we did was uh, we created a SPI encoder and decoder that makes use of uh, M2K's digital interface uh, to better communicate with the devices. So the API that we used uh, is uh, similar to a lot of drivers that we have. I'm going to go over that in a minute. And the cool thing about it is that it runs on the host machine. So it's not on the firmware. It's not on additional uh, additional hardware. You, you just run it on the on the host machine. Uh, the NoOS driver repository contains a bunch of uh, ADI ADI uh, drivers for a bunch of ADI components that are not meant to be run on um, on on devices that have OS. So it's like bare metal uh, bare metal drivers for microcontrollers or for the user space. And uh, there on the bottom left, you can see the um, uh, API that it's used. So all of the drivers uh, ha use the same API. It is a uh, spy init, spy remove, spy write and read. Uh, which is the same API that we used for the M2K uh, engine. So uh, what you can do is basically take a, a device driver from the NoOS repository, link it against the M2K spy engine, and you can communicate with the device. Uh, you just compile the program, and you can communicate a, uh, with the device like uh, straight from, uh, uh, from, from your application. You don't need additional hardware. Uh, the ADF4351 sync, uh, the ADF4351 is a voltage controlled oscillator. It has a, a range from 35 megahertz to 4.4 gigahertz, and uh, it's uh, configurable uh, through SPI. So, uh, like I said, it has an easy to use driver in the NoS repository, and now I'm going to show you how easy it was for us to build uh, the ADF4351 sync which is a GNU radio, um, a GNU radio block that inter uses the M2K to interface with, uh, with this PLL. So first of all, you have to include the, the, the driver. Uh, then you, you create like the boilerplate code for, for the ADF4350 sync. I think, uh, yeah, you create the boilerplate code for, for it, like the constructor, the destructor, and uh, everything. Inside the constructor, uh, there are two parts of interest. So the first part is the uh, uh, the first part of the structure here, which, ha which has hundred hundred thousand, uh, which is the uh, I'm sorry, it's actually one million. That refers to megahertz. It's one megahertz, which is the clock input, <laughs> which is the clock in, uh, sorry, it's the clocking of the spy interface. Uh, then there's the chip select pin that we use and the URI. The URI is the uh, actual location of the M2K device. The second part of interest is the one that is underlined here, the uh, ADF4350 setup. Uh, this function comes straight from, uh, from the driver. You just call this function and um, uh, the driver handles all of the initialization for you. Uh, then we map uh, some uh, uh, Whenever you receive a message using the set message handler, whenever you receive a message, we map that to a function, and then we write the actual function uh, to to change the frequency whenever we receive the message. So um, we uh, we run uh, this function from the driver, the ADF forty three fifty set frequency, and this is basically it. We get the frequency from the from the message. And uh, the driver handles all of the SPI transactions uh, between the M2K and the um, between the M2K and the PLL. So this is what the block looks like. Uh, here are all of the registers that you need to set up, and um, yeah, you're good to go after this. So how it all fits together? Uh, we initially. We when experimented, we created this board, uh, which has all of the components uh, together. But eventually, we created like a more integrated version, which is more robust, more easy to use, uh, in order to get uh, FM reception. 
in GNU Radio, uh, we created a, a Python script to initialize the, the libm2k. Uh, we used the for, uh, ADF 4351 to configure the PLL. Uh, and we used the IO device source block in order to get the analog data from the device back in, into the GNU radio flow. Uh, then we used a bunch of signal processing uh, blocks to uh, uh, actually demodulate the data and send it back to an audio sync. So here is a demo of how it works. I hope you can hear it uh, because it's not hooked up to the audio of the HDMI. So. Uh, Yeah, it's, sorry about this, but it's. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, but the audio doesn't go through. So, uh, yeah, we definitely have a demo at, at the booth. Uh, so you, you can see that the FM signals are coming through. Uh, then we tune, tune the frequency and now you could actually hear the, the radio that's, that's coming in. So uh, as uh, you know, conclusions and uh, future plans, uh, I said that it, it is possible to use the uh, M2K's analog uh, front end to capture RF data with proper circuitry. And the M2K is a good, good combo to get started with electronics and even SDR. So in the future, we. We, uh, we plan to extend libm2k's functionality, so we want to create like an out-of-tree module GRM2k, which is based on GRIO uh, to provide more easy ways to communicate, to interact with the M2k through GNU radio. Uh, we want to create also interfaces for other protocols, such as the I2C and the UART, uh, for better integration with our drivers. Uh, these uh, interfaces, we want to put them into the libm2k, uh, into the m2k CLI, so you can program uh, devices right from uh, from the console. And eventually, we want also want to add Debian packaging for libm2k and Scopy, so you can install them using apt-get. And uh, yeah, thanks. Do we have any questions for Adrian? because I have one. So I saw in one of your screenshots of Scopy what looked like a Windows 10 program. Uh, yeah. And then I went to your GitHub repository and you have nightly Windows builds. Yeah, that's true. So you have nightly builds of GNU Radio in Windows. Uh, I guess we don't have, well. <laughs> We don't even have yearly builds of GNU Radio in Windows. Yeah, we, uh, we, we do them. We do them with um, um, MSYS, uh, yeah, I don't know what that chain. is. We should, we, should, we should figure out how to do that, because that would be awesome. It seems like a path forward to, for good radio supporting Windows. Sure. Uh, oh. No? All right. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thanks.